Well, as you probably know, I'm always late to the party. Uh, we've been talking about this virtual prison, the system, etc., you know, for a long time. But it, it never really dawned on me until just the other day how complete and total the prison is. I guess I've always kind of looked at it in terms of like government and NSA and stuff like that. And, and, you know, I'd heard a lot about, like, you know, the data gathering, and um, it just never really clicked uh, until the other day. And uh, I got to be honest, I was beyond impressed with how total and thorough the system is. Maybe maybe impressed is, the, is a bad word, uh, just awestruck. But um, this started to, like, really begin to make sense about a month ago. Someone showed me a feature on my, on my, I bought a new cell phone, or I got one over Christmas. I had like a, a really old one that finally broke, and um, so I got a new one. And there's a picture app, or whatever you call it, um, a setting, I think it's called Live Feed. And uh, it's basically a picture, but it's like a two-second video, really. You can see movement in the picture and hear audio. And someone showed me. They're like, watch, um, you know, count one, two, three, and then take the picture on three. So it's like one, two, click. And then if you go back and look at it, you can see movement and, and hear audio on the one and the two before you even clicked it. So, you know, I had long suspected that these devices were listening. You know, I'd heard countless stories about it. But this was like, you know, complete confirmation because it was rec recording not only the audio, but the video as well before I even clicked the button. And uh, it just blew me away. It was just sort of like, I, I can't believe it. And, and I'm surprised they even added that. You know, it just sort of like, uh, I mean, I guess there's something to be said about the system exposing itself or whatever, but um, it was just so blatant. And of course, you know, the thing, in my opinion, that just shows it's always on. It's always on, recording listening, audio, video, whatever. Uh, and then, of, of course, you get into the whole thing about voice recognition. I've heard countless stories about people, you know, they'll leave their iPhone at home and then they'll be talking to somebody else, let's say across town, and they'll be talking about something and they'll conclude that, yeah, the, uh, the AI, the bot or whatever, heard me talking on another phone that somebody else owns and it like um, then sent advertisements to, you know, my computer. So it was listening to you on somebody else's device. <laughs> it's like, no matter what you do, uh, you know, it's gathering information. And then, of course, another big slap in the face. Now, this is just a picture from the Internet. But this is what's been happening lately. I've noticed this over the last, I'd say, three, three months, maybe. I'll get in my car to go to work. And it doesn't happen every day, but, you know, at least once or twice a week, it'll just, like, show me the... Um, you know, the traffic or whatever, you know, it knows where I'm going and it's telling me what the traffic is and it'll happen when I leave work. It's like these two very predictable places that I go and for whatever reason, it just sends me this information without my even like, you know, pulling up the maps or anything. And so it's just more confirmation that it's not only listening, it's not only watching, but it's tracking. It's tracking every movement I make. And so, you know, there are certain people that, you know, I, I don't really follow anything on YouTube anymore, but uh, people that try to live off the grid somewhat. And I don't mean they move out to the woods, but, um, you know, they'll buy stuff with cash and, um, you know, leave your phone at home. And, you know, an example would be like, you know, you get cash out of the bank and then go to the coin shop and buy a silver coin off the record. But it wouldn't even matter if you left your phone at home because uh, as soon as you get there, you got to talk to the guy that works there and his cell phone's listening to you. So as soon as you say something, the robot or whatever knows it's you, voice recognition. It knows what you're buying um, and it knows where you are. You know, it knows how long, you know, you're in the store. I mean, if you go to Walmart, you want to buy, let's just say groceries. Right? I'm going to pay cash. I don't want the system to know what I'm buying. Uh, sorry. Sorry. You know, it obviously knows where you are. I mean, it's not like there's a million cameras in Walmart anyway. So here you come. It's watching you take the food off the shelf. And, uh, you know, it knows what you're buying. It knows what you eat. It knows when you eat. And then you um, start to consider, uh, I was going to talk a little bit about 
you know, just regular social media. I don't usually, I don't have a Twitter account. I can't figure that out. And Facebook, I just, I don't use it. And I used to think, yeah, you know, it's probably best to stay away from this stuff. But it doesn't even matter. You know, because, um, you know, everything is, is being watched. You know, you, you're at home eating. It knows when you're eating. It knows what you're eating. And this really all kind of came together the other day. I listened to, a, I think, a Crow 777 video, and they were talking about this. And they were saying that the system is always just building models, right? The more information it gets on you, the better it can predict what you're going to do in the future. So much so that um, at least their guest was arguing that it could predict your time, place, means uh, you know, of death. And I thought at first, that's just, that's ridiculous. That's impossible. But then the more I thought about it, I mean, it has access to all your medical records and everything. You know, a lot of people wear those Fitbits, whatever, tracking your, you know, heart rate, blood pressure. But if it knows your nutrition, it knows how much you eat, when you eat, probably knows when you're using the bathroom. I mean, the amount of information that it has is just staggering. And so this all kind of clicked over the weekend, you know, as I was thinking about it, you know, doing my own little prep thing here, a little prep there. Uh, you know, it's just sort of a hobby, really. It's not like I actually think I'm going to, you know, get away with anything or, or you know, do anything. I mean, there's just no getting away. There, there's nothing that really can be done because it just knows everything. It knows everything. And so the idea of like fighting back is, um, I mean, that's sort of a pointless conversation or a pointless endeavor. There's no fighting back. There's nothing to be done, at least directly fighting back against the system. It knows all. And it, and it knows even more. Like each day it's being upgraded. People are getting rid of phones, getting new ones, new computers, new TVs, new refrigerators, whatever. So it's becoming more thorough and more saturated. And this is stuff I'm sure you know. I mean, everybody already knows this except for me. And now I know. So the last person on Earth uh, now knows. So maybe that means something that now that the last person finally knows... Uh, I wonder what happens from this point. But um, kind of changing gears, I wanted to just sort of update the, the rice experiment. Pretty much concluded. Uh, now, this started mid-January, and you can see here the hate rice and the love rice. And now the hate rice is turning to liquid. It's liquefied. It's, you know, it's beyond whatever. I mean, the, the love rice is it's kind of still hanging on. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go eat it. Uh, but... Um, Again, here, it's just more confirmation that words have power. Uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know if it's the actual spoken word. And that's what I tend to think. It, it has something to do with the spoken word because a lot of this experiment was done in a classroom setting. And so there's kind of a lot of joking around. And when you're telling the rice that you hate it and it's kind of funny, other people are kind of snickering. So trying to, you know, draw up that hate feeling or that emotion is really, it's impossible to some extent. Not to say that doesn't have something to do with it, I don't know, but I'm just more apt to think that um, it's the actual word, it's the actual spoken word, at least in English. I, I don't know if it, it crosses to other languages. Uh, I've been considering redoing this experiment and doing it in Spanish just to see what happens. I mean, you know, why not, right? So I probably will do that. Uh, you know, just just to see, just to keep it on, you know, the front burner, something that I want to be more, I guess, in tune with. I want to I want to have this on my mind that my words are important, uh, not not so much because I want to liquefy rice or liquefy the system. And maybe I can tell the system that I hate it. And uh, I mean, normally that would be like a joke, but I don't know. I mean, I have no idea what my words are capable of doing, but it's just more confirmation that there's something probably even greater about the human condition that, you know, never really gets consideration. You know, we can consider how great and impressive and thorough and exact and precise the system is. It's a beast system. Let's not kid ourselves, or I don't want to kid myself. It's not like this is good. Of course, it is something we brought about on our own when I mean, we willingly go out and buy these devices. And now that I know, uh, you know, it could pretty much be assumed that we all know that it's listening and monitoring and checking everything that we do. But we do it to ourselves. And so, I don't know, is there a way to undo it? Probably not. I'm not really interested in, uh, I, at least I don't, 
spend really any time considering how do we fix this. I don't think anything is fixable because, uh, you know, it's, it's all just a test of some sort. And I guess it was designed to descend into the depth that it has descended into. And the only really, uh, I guess, course of action is more of a, uh, I don't want to say spiritual awakening, because I think there's something to, to be said about the physical aspect of humanity. Um, I tend not to separate it much anymore. Oh, it's the spiritual, not the physical. But I think it's all one. It's all one thing. At least that's kind of what I'm concluding at this point. I might I might change on that, maybe go back toward a more spiritual outlook. But um, at least for the time being, there, there seems to be not a separation. Maybe that occurs at death or something like that. In that case, it, it doesn't really, it's just a spiritual element at that point. But at least for the here and now, I think the human aspect should be considered. So anyway, anyway, this is um, my conclusions so far, I was going to talk a little bit, you know, obviously it knows how much money you make and how much money you spend, whether you're using cash or credit, it knows, it knows what you're getting, it knows what you're spending, uh, it's, and, and everyone knows that, that's not even news, but, you know, th this was news to me, these kinds of things, um, totally blown away by that, but, uh, you know, what else is new, right? Every day is another, uh, why should I even be surprised? I'm surprised that I'm surprised, but that just seems to be the way it goes, and anyway... That's it. The end.